And uh, this is actually, well, certainly Martin Veldhaus, a lightweight. She was uh, a, the lightweight reserve the for the Dutch growing team range, this year for the Tokyo this. Olympics. And they're going up against the, the open weights from Leander. Yeah, so obviously the Dutch like women's double, you know, they would lead in that final and then had a little error in those last couple of, couple of it was like 50 meters, wasn't it? And they kind of drifted over the line to get their kind of bronze medal. But it was, you know, a big match up here. And obviously if you're spare, you're dying to get out there and race. And dying to get out of the blocks they were. Holland Roy Club on the left-hand side of your picture. It is Martin Val Martina Waldhaus in the stroke seat, the lightweight European champion in the lightweight single skull from 2020, who does what all lightweights do best, Mark, and you'll know this, out of the blocks at a really punishing rhythm at a high rating. And it's an efficient way, because obviously you don't have that extra body weight to move. So trying to be dynamic, maximize the weight you have, putting it on the end of the spoon, being clean, and I think this is going to be really interesting because this Dutch crew, if they did see what Leander did yesterday, Leander kind of didn't really attack the first half. They kind of rode their way into it. And I'm sure the lightweights aren't going to give them that kind of that cushion of time to do that today. So it'll be really interesting how the Leander crew responds to this because this Dutch crew are not going to hang around. Well, you can see the comparison there. Leander Club on the near side, Jess Layden in the bow seat, uh, Georgie Brayshaw in the stroke seat. A bit more like a steam train, like you say, they're just at a consistent pace, and they're just going to try and stick to that one consistent flat line rhythm and hope that that's enough to, to eat through that margin that the Dutch have got off the start because, well, the Dutch are in control now, aren't they? Yeah, you've just seen the Dutch come onto their kind of race pace there. And that was a, it looked like quite a dramatic change down rather than just kind of letting it go. So it'd be interesting to see if Leander can, you know, you know, pounce on them now as they're already in their rhythm. And can they cut, start to call, claw back this Dutch boat? Well, we're going to watch as they try and fasten their bow balls to the stern of the Hollandia Roy Club crew from the Netherlands. Great to see international representation here in the Stoner Challenge Trophy, especially the quality that we do have. And uh, in the bow seat, Voss, who was uh, a silver medalist at the European Rowing Championships when they were in Varese this year, back earlier in the season. Just missed out on qualifying for the Olympics. She was part of the Dutch women's eight that went to the final Olympic qualification. Regatta. So both of these athletes um, just shy of going to Tokyo, just shy. And this will be their main aim of the season. Now. Oh, very much so. You know, when you go to that event, it is, I remember watching it, it's horrible to watch because that's your last chance to get to Olympic Games. And if you don't, unfortunately, you're going to be like everybody else watching it on TV. So yeah, this would have been their big event for the year. They'd have been obviously training very hard as everybody is for Henley, but this will be extra special for them for miss because they missed out on the Olympic Games. And the Netherlands sent a really strong team to Tokyo, right? So these athletes will be very strong. They had the most amount of boats qualified across the games, 11 crews out of a possible 14, one more than, than GB, um, who again, we've already talked about um, Jess Layden, who's in the bow seat of the Leander crew on the left-hand side of your picture. She again missed out on that quad selection um, for the GB rowing team going to Tokyo. Um, there's going to be a lot of passion in this semi-final, I suspect. Yeah, this particular race means a lot to both these crews for very different reasons. Um, but it's also important to make sure that you have that kind of calm, collective thought process when you're in it and not letting things outside externally that have gone on before inhibit what you're about to do. So as you can see, the Dutch crew have continued to move out. And this Leanna crew really needs to do something in the next couple of meters to stay in contact or in touch with this Dutch crew. Well, we're much further down the track than we were yesterday when Leander started to move through. In their Friday race, they had started to take the lead by this point. We're approaching the half mile, almost at Remenham. Um, and uh, it... you just saw a quick look from Jess just to see where they are. And it's really interesting what call she would do at that point to make sure that they can start easing back if they can on this Dutch cruise. They come into the kind of 40 marker. Yeah, so we're through Forley now, and uh, the Dutch have managed to nab a bit of clear water. If you were to look at this race side on, you'd be able to see a gap between the the 
overlap of the crews. You know, there is no overlap, in fact. And uh, that is an important place for the Dutch on the right-hand side of your screen in the orange. They're rowing with their national team blades. That's an important place for them to be because they know if they give Leander an inch, they'll take a mile. Yeah, you've just seen Jess Layden look again. Obviously, she's going to relay that information to Georgie saying, we need to go now, basically. We need to get back in contact. And you can see this, they're a length behind according to the three-quarter mile marker there with the two boards, the one and two on the right-hand side of the screen, you can see. Yeah, and uh, I think they have closed the gap. Georgie Brayshaw taking direction there from Jess Layden. Brayshaw in the stroke seat, uh, the former Leeds Rowing Club member. She moved to the Anderbeck in 2017. She's been training with the club in a bid to try and make the senior national team. And here they come. We talked about them being a steam train. I think they've had to try and sort of change their race plan a little bit, and a response was required there, Mark. Yeah, that those two looks that Jess had were so important to just make sure she knew exactly where they were and relaying that information to Georgia. And obviously, her relaying that will grow, they'll grow in confidence as a unit because they're inching back on this Dutch crew. And we talked about them not being a sprint crew, this Liana crew. That they are that diesel engine winding up, but they're going to have to go through the gears now to make their way and over to overhaul this Dutch crew as they come into the regatta enclosures. Well, they're keeping it now very steady. They're only at 30 strokes a minute, and uh, that is quite low and long, and they are eating back. This is incredible to watch. Look at that overlap now. What are, the, what are you thinking now if you're in the Dutch boat? Do we think they've gone out too hard? or? Well, this is interesting where the Dutch have kind of come onto their base pace and they still have gears to go. But the problem is, is that it's Leanna Crew is just cutting through them like a, a warm knife will cut through butter, basically. They're just going from one end being out behind them, and it looks like they're just going to move straight through in that constant rhythm they're in. And the thing is that when you're moving like this, you don't need to change the gear because Leander have that, that upper hand now. You know, those mind games are going on. What a beautiful shot here of these two women's double skulls in the Stoner Challenge Trophy. Bow ball for bow ball. And uh, the du I don't think I've seen the Dutch look out yet here. Mark Veldhaus and Voss, this, uh, this very well-seasoned international pedigree double has just allowed this to happen. They've not even allowed themselves to look out the boat. No, and this is when the mind games happen now because Leanna will be growing in confidence because they've gone from behind. They're feeling good. They're feeling energized because they've gone through the Dutch. And the Dutch have been in front for so long, it's kind of draining when someone comes past you like that. And how you respond, especially now, is so important. What have the Dutch got to give in the final few strokes? They're coming through the enclosures now. We'll see those shots, that uh, very famous Henley Royal Regatta picture of the church, of the town, in just a second. You can see they've got limited time left to make a move here. If they're going to overhaul this row through from Brayshaw and Leyden, and uh, they're being encouraged now through the deck chairs. What have the Dutch got? And you can see the Liana crew now have started going up. It doesn't look as pretty now. Obviously, they know their base pace is solid, but can they still generate more speed by having more cadence and more rate? They're doing a great job there. That's the first look I've seen from Ross in the bow seat for Hollandia Roy Club from the Netherlands, and uh, they've let it slip away from them. Leander snuck through on the Buckinghamshire station. They've got all the chasing left to do now, and a lot of work, a mountain to climb in the final strokes, and it's just not going to happen for the Dutch. A really well executed race, trust in their race plan. Leander Club, Brayshaw, and Leyden, and uh, a small yelp there. They were delighted. Delighted to do that. Uh, wow, very, very impressive from a very impressive crew.